Welcome to the Free From Wall Street Podcast, where we share how we have done over $200 million in real estate deals to create, preserve, and pass on generational wealth without the roller coaster ride of the stock market. If you're ready to start investing with purpose, visit freefromwallstreet.com. But for now, let's dive into this episode. So welcome back to the Free From Wall Street Podcast. Today, we're going to give you guys a little bit of insight as to what questions should you be asking before you invest in a real estate syndication? Right, so this is entitled 101 Questions to Ask Before Investing in a Real Estate Syndication. So once you choose a real estate syndication, sign the paperwork, wire the funds, you're going to have very little control over the performance of that asset. Right, You're truly a passive investor and it's really important to make sure that you are um, confident and trusting of the people that you've placed your money with because they're the ones that are going to manage the day-to-day, they're going to execute the business plan, and they're the ones that are going to guard and grow your capital. So really important to do your due diligence up front and you have to be absolutely confident in the sponsor before you invest. So do your research, make sure that you're asking the right questions and if you don't know what kind of questions to ask, This is why we put this together for you. So we have 101 questions here. We are not going to go over all of them, but you can go to our website and you can see the full list of 101 questions to ask. So we're going to give you um, a list of these. It's going to give you some good ideas. might help guide you towards some of the subjects that you want to be talking about with the Uh, And with the sponsor, it might help give you some ideas that other investors are asking, some some questions that other people are already asking to these sponsors. So this is a great place to start. So before you wire those funds, make sure you're asking a couple of these questions, if not all of them. Take your time, right? Make sure that you're doing your due diligence. It's your hard-earned money. Whenever we um, take in somebody's capital, we, we understand that they've worked hard for it. And it's our job to protect and grow it to the best of our ability. So we know the answers as operators to these questions. So you as an investor should be comfortable asking them. And if you're getting some wonky answers, maybe <laughs> maybe um, reconsider, right, if you're going to invest. So one, how did you choose this market or why did you choose this market? Um demographics, geography, um, you know, is there population growth? Is there population uh, condensing? So, you know, for us, we're always looking for markets that have um, great economic growth, great population growth, good job growth, good job diversity. You know, you can look at heat maps as to where people are leaving and where people are going. So geography, right? There's a couple of questions on geography, on the market, in the employers in the market, on the sub-markets. So ask questions about the market, right? And then we like to move on to the asset, right? So we kind of do a funnel, like big picture, why this area of the country? A little bit deeper sub-market wise, what the employers are like, what's the tourism, economic drivers, things like that. And then let's go asset level. When was the asset built? What do you like about this asset class? Um, you know, what is the asset class? Is it a multifamily? Is it class A, which is, uh, you know, kind of very high end, high rises, things like that. Is it a class B, class C? Is it a C minus or a D? All of these, um, asset classes exist and different sponsors like certain asset classes, probably because it sits in their skill set, right? So if you're doing very heavy repositions in war zone type areas, right? then they probably have expertise in that in some way. So, you know, find out about the asset. When was it built? Um, What do you like about the asset class? How many units are there? What's the unit mix? Unit mix is important because you don't necessarily want to have all of the same unit. Diversity in the asset is diversity in your investment. So what's the cost per unit? How's that compared to the area, right? If we're buying something for $100,000 a unit and the average is 116, Good deal, right? You're buying something for 100 and the average is 80. Why are you overpaying? Or why does it appear that you're overpaying? So good questions to ask. What's the median income uh, for the tenants? What's the business plan? How are we going to take it from A to B? In what 
world are we going from a $10 million valuation to $15 million valuation in five years? How are you doing that? How are you producing that value? What are your CapEx um, capital expenditures, meaning what kind of repairs are you going to be doing right when you buy the property? How did you come up with your projected rental premiums? So if I redo a rental um, unit and I do new floors, new doors, new paint, new kitchen, new bathrooms, how much am I spending for that? And then what does that look like on a rental premium or a rent bump? Um, how's the deal structured, right? Who's getting paid when? What's the operating agreement look like? And you know that's all written out in the operating agreement that you guys are going to be signing for all of these deals. Um, how much money are you raising for the project? How much money are you leaving in out of what you're raising? Right? You want to make sure that you're partnering with people that believe in the project enough to put their own capital in. Um, is there a preferred return? Why or why not? And a preferred return simply is the investor gets paid before the operator does. So in a preferred return structure, the mortgage gets paid, the preferred uh, investor gets paid, and then the owners um, can take a, a distribution. How often are you paying investor distributions? Sometimes it's monthly, sometimes it's quarterly. Um, what are the, what's the projected hold time? How long am I going to have my money in this project for? Why do you expect that time frame? How did you underwrite this? Right. Um, how'd you come up with that timeline? And what is the market, uh, you know, what happens if the market softens and we have to hold past that projected time frame? And then, you know, how are you keeping the investors up to date, right? We have an investor portal where people can log in with a secure username and password. They see all of their investment documents. We do weekly and monthly updates, pictures, videos, CapEx, improvement pictures, before and afters, all that stuff. But, you know, we know that people like to invest in real estate for the same reason that we do, which is they want to touch it, feel it, see it. And if it's 800 miles away, how are you going to do that? Well, through our investor portal is how we do that. So make sure you're asking how, how am I getting my information, right, from you guys about what's going on in the project. Um, what's, what's an acquisition fee? Is there one? How much are you charging? Right? How much do you get paid for your acquisition fee? So there's typical fees in most of these projects, right? Acquisition, asset management, property management, and then disposition fees. So there's there's fee structures throughout that make sure that the operators are making money throughout the project um, on top of what the returns are that are getting paid out to the investors. So make sure you're asking those questions. It usually is all listed on the offering memorandum that you've seen that shows the opportunity. And then um, we get this one a lot. What happens if I had an emergency and I needed, money, needed access to my money? That is going to be operator by operator. So make sure you're asking those questions. How did you find the deal? What, what's the reason that the owner is selling? You know, These are all questions that I like to know because it gives me an idea as to how they found a good deal. right? And then let's talk about the, the mortgage. How big is the loan? What's the loan to value? What's the rate? Is it non-recourse or is it full recourse? So just make sure that you're asking uh, a bunch of these questions, right? So I'm skipping around. We're on like 50 right now. So we're halfway through. Bear with us. Um, and then you want to know about the team, right? Who's on the team? Did they walk the property? What are their roles and responsibilities? How many deals have you done before as a team? Do you have a securities attorney? Can I look them up? What's the name of them, right? Uh, do you have an accounting firm? What's their name? Can I look them up? Um, what's your ultimate goal with syndications? I like to know what our investors' goals are. You should know what the operators' goals are because if they're not equally aligned, you should know that going in. Right? Um, ask for some references. You know, the, our key metric, our key performance indicator, our metric is happy investors. If I can give you a list of happy investors that you can talk to, then that's great. If they don't want to do that because of privacy issues or whatever, um, I would I would reconsider investing with that group. So, and then you want to know, you know, what um, what's the current cap rate going in? What's the projected cap rate? How did you get there? Just Google cap rates if you don't know what they are. Basically, it's the net operating income divided by the purchase price, and that kind of gives you a valuation of the property. So. Uh, can I go visit the property? What if I want to go see it? Right? Uh, it's your investment. 
you're going to be a partner on the deal, I, I personally think that you should be able to schedule a time. Now, you might have to be flexible with those times and understand you might not be able to get into units because people live there, but if you want to go check out your investment, I think you should be able to do that. Um, how do you do your due diligence? When did you do it? Did you walk every unit? Tell me about that. And, you know, so have, and then I also like to ask people, have you been uh, a limited partner? Have you been a passive investor in the past? I know you're an active investor, but have you also been a passive investor? And this is telling mostly to experience, right? As an active operator, we do that, but we also passively invest in deals because we believe in it, right? So what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Find out if they're also investors. Um, and then asking money, asking questions about the earnest money deposit. When did that go into escrow? Does it go hard after a due diligence period, which means it's non-refundable? Um, who's asset managing? Who's doing the accounting? I mentioned that before. Who's doing the schedule K-1s? Who's going to be sending those out? Typically, we do that. Uh, we'll do all the accounting on our side and then send K-1s at the end of the year. Um, how do I send you my funds? Wire check. What's the deadline for getting my funds in? Um, will you be doing an investor webinar? What don't you like about the deal? What do you like about the deal? What's the biggest risk in this deal? So these are all a bunch of questions. For the full list of 101, make sure you go to our website, integrityhg.com. Check out the blogs page. I believe it'll be on. There'll also be a link in this podcast episode to that. And that way you can really have a good understanding of the investment that you're making. And if you feel like you're getting brushed off or you feel like you're not getting the right answers, then you know that maybe it's not the right investment for you. Um, operators dig into these things typically very well. They should easily be able to answer all hundred of these questions and more. So if you feel like maybe you're not getting the right answers or the runaround, and look, sometimes you're talking to the person on the call who doesn't handle all of these lanes, right? And maybe they just say, uh, you know what? I'm not sure about that answer. Let me get back to you. And that's a perfectly fine answer. I'm fine with that. When I hear other people tell me, I don't know, but I'm going to get back to you, and they get back to me within a day with the answer, I'm, I'm fine with that, right? Maybe they just need somebody else on the team to clarify some of the more fine points. So I'm good with that too. Anyway, thank you for listening. Um, make sure you go to integrityhg.com, sign up for our investor club. You can sign up for the uh, free passive investor seven day email course. We have a couple of resources on there. Read through the blogs. If you have questions, you can schedule a call with me or the team right through the website. We look forward to talking to you about your investment goals, how we can help if they align. And then um, also don't forget to check out our invest with purpose page to talk about the donor advised fund and a percentage of all the income that comes into our business going out to nonprofits. We think that there's no shortage of need in the world. These deals give us a great opportunity to give back and give abundantly. So hope to see you. Uh, join us on that journey. Definitely reach out to us if you have any questions. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Free From Wall Street podcast. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review and let us know what you think. 